Hey guys, today I'll be doing an unboxing of the PCIe to USB 3.0 extender card 5 port. First things I want to mention that this card has a few names. Malia, Revo, and Superhub are just three of them I noticed. The drivers say Renezas, so I take it that is the main brand. I have a few links on my site nailing it down to that company. As far as I know, they all use the same cardboard box. Now this is important as the box can damage a lot of these boards. Um, the issue with these is the fact the box. The box is the main problem. It's small. So what they do is they'll jam these cables in here and they'll try to close up the box. Doing that actually causes damage to these capacitors right here. These two were pushed out that way. They weren't broken off, but there is reviews of uh, people's um, capacitors breaking off. This one was almost disconnected, and these other four were fine. But that's due to the fact that they push these cables on here, and then it pushes against the capacitors, and then they'll either rip off or they break off. Please don't let this scare you. I have this card for two weeks now, and it is great. But be warned, your card could be shipped damaged. I need to do a little bit of soldering on this one to fix one of the capacitor legs. It broke off. Alright, so I did find something wrong with this board. I'm going to be showing you underneath my microscope here. Now again, this is the capacitors. That's the problem. One of them is actually loose. I'm going to show you that now. You see right there, it's broken off. So it's just a matter of time where it's just going to separate. It is still sitting and kind of somewhat making a connection. That's why this card is working. But uh, So you can already see that it is broken right here. Right there. If I push on it, it lifts up. So yeah, if you um, if you do ever pick up one of these boards, at least have a little bit of knowledge with soldering, in just case you have to put these back onto the board. Um, if you don't have any knowledge, I highly recommend passing up on this card. There we go. This is not the best, but uh, I just want to have a peek here. Just gonna move this thing up. But yeah, it's uh, huh, pretty nasty for a soldering job right there. That's just all the flux right there. I can wipe that down a little bit with some 99% rubbing alcohol, which I will. I just want to double check, make sure this thing doesn't move, and it's still lifting. So that's not good enough. I gotta do that a better here. I try to push down on it while I'm using this. There we go. It's sticking now. Yeah, it's definitely a crappy soldering job, but as long as it works, right? That's all that matters. I'm going to be testing this board now and uh, find out from there. I had a bit of trouble soldering that part, but if the box was a little bit bigger, these cards wouldn't get damaged. The reason why I picked out this card is because my Alienware Aurora R4 has two USB 3.0 ports and it would be nice to have more. I made some video clips on installing it to this board. Have a look. All right, so we're looking at uh, revision four of the Alienware Aurora motherboard. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this PCI Express E um, 1X slot and I'm going to install the card there. Uh, so I'm kind of missing another screwdriver here. Um, all my screwdrivers are outside right now. Um, so I'm gonna just slide on in there and go from there. Now this motherboard actually has two USB 3.0s. There's one in the back on the motherboard and then there's one in the front, but that's just not enough. I needed more. Uh, what do we got? All right, this is a cable for the next graphics card if I do put one in. Other than that, I don't see any other wires down there. So the only one I got is the Molex connector on the top right here. So I'm going to be going off of that. I'm going to try to send the wire all the way down through here and to the card. But first of all, I need to test to see if this card actually works. Now, there's no way in heck I'm going to be able to connect it like this. So I'm going to have to make an extension. So I might be lucky with this one a little bit. I did find an extender temporarily. I will extend it, probably this one right here, because it doesn't look very nice. Um, I'm just gonna temporarily use this one. It's gotta plug directly into the, the board here. Maybe I should plug this thing in first. I'm a little bit difficult to get nothing in there. Okay, I'm just going to uh, take this card back out. I'm gonna let it hang for now. 
Wow, that's really tight. Yeah, just be careful with yours. If you do, however, you get this card. Computer's uh, cable management really sucks, but uh, I'm at least going to extend it and try to make it look at least half decent. I don't want it sitting like that. In the meantime, I just want to make sure this card works. It's all that I care about right now. Well, it's installed. It's connected to a Molex here, which is has a Molex uh, extension. I just want to make sure that's kind of somewhat tight. Wait, it gets a good connection, and it's going down to the card. Let's find out if this thing works. It's pretty much all loaded now. Just got to go to device manager. I just right clicked on the start menu and just went to device manager. Universal bus. There we go. So the host controller is actually here. It does show. Hey guys, this is future me. I'm actually currently working on this video right now. I just wanted to actually show you how to do it. You just right click on the start menu here. You go to device manager. And if you're using Windows 10, it's most likely going to install its own drivers. But if it doesn't, uh, you can definitely use the CD. If you don't have a CD drive, I have the drivers sitting on my website. So you can just download them and install them from there. But as you can see right here, it's it's working. I've been using this card for two weeks now, and it works perfectly without a problem. Actually, I have a mouse connected to it, too. So, so this is... Uh going to be an extension. I got a pile of wire here. I'm just going to choose which one I want fairly long enough. Um, actually, I'm going to use some better snips here. It's nice to hold on to wire because you just never know when you're going to need it. All right. So I'm going to be using that as my extra length. Should be long enough. I do have a couple pieces here that I snipped off apparently a long time ago. I'm going to be using them. I'm just going to connect this Molex together like that and call it good. I just checked to see if that was enough, and sure it is. I just gotta strip the jackets off. And I'm going to grab my other soldering iron, the one I use 99% of the time. I wanna make sure these are all the same length. Okay, so these have uh, been stripped. I just gotta do the same with this. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab one of these. I'm gonna twist up the yellow together, twist up a black, twist up another black, which is red. Now I'm going to throw a little bit of solder onto them, make sure they don't pull apart. I'll use my helper's hands here. Do them black now. Last black, all the way around. There we go. Last wire is done. Now I'm just going to deal with bending them. Alright, so right now I'm just uh, sliding the heat shrink onto the last pieces of wires here. As before, use the torch. together nice and tight so I have a few of these zip ties here same as what was on here before what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take continuity first although I know it's going to be working I just like to double check always I start plugging things in and then calling it good. Good. 
good. All right. Perfecto. Don't need you anymore. Just need. To Here we go. My homemade wire. I'm just going to leave the zip ties as is for now. I'm just going to connect it into the computer and then I'll tighten them up when it's all together. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is just mess around with my wiring. I'm going to keep that um, since this is already open. I guess I can tighten this one up. So I wanted to show you real quick here, I sent my wire all the way down through here around the graphics card, actually kind of behind it, and then into this clip right here, this one, and now it's down here. I still have a Molex connector up here, and I now have one down here that I can use at any given time, which i will actually run off of SATA as well. Just got to finish with this Molex. This thing's kind of cheap, but uh, I'm going to use it anyways. It's as tight as it'll get. I'm just going to kind of push it down here. That way it's out of sight. Now the cable management inside this computer isn't that great, but uh, it's a little hard to put these cables somewhere if you can't hide them behind the board. I made some test benchmark speeds with my original USB 2.0 and 3.0 parts to create a comparison to the extender card. So I did do some uh, test results in between my USB 3.0 and 2.0 ports on the computer and also the extender card to kind of give you guys a comparison. Now they're right here. So this one here is with the Alienware motherboard. This is the USB 2.0 uh, front end of my computer. I was using the SanDisk Ultra USB 3.0 64GB and using Crystal Disk Mark in order to bench these marks. So here again with the 2.0 and the back end of the computer, so pretty much the same results for that. 3.0 in the front of the computer, so definitely a lot higher benchmarks. And USB 3.0 in the back, so it's a bit of difference between that but all right here we go with the extended card this one here has 134 and it's pretty much the same thing as the one in, in between these two here so that's about normal um, same thing with uh, port 3 this is port 1 here so they really haven't changed much pretty much the same I also did a test with my Samsung SSD 860 Pro 256 gigabytes on the Thermaltake Black Duet uh, USB 3.0 docking station. I did make a video of this. Uh, link will be in the description. You can check that out if you really want something like that. But uh, this is the results from that. So it definitely um, supports SSD speeds, which is actually pretty good right now. But, um, yeah, this is the, some of the results. There's a lot more information on this site if you guys want to check it out. But uh, I just wanted to show you some of the benchmarks. This took a while to actually do, so I thought I uh, might as well show it to you on the website as it's a lot quicker doing this. For the last two weeks I had this card installed, I haven't had an issue and it runs like a champ. As I said, be careful. Yours may end up ship damaged. So make sure you have a soldering gun on you. You may need it. Hope you liked the video. Please do rate and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.